Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Audiology. With this podcast, I really want to do a new song and an old song every week. So I figured we'd kick off week one with a classic and we're going to do Fleetwood Mac's Dreams. Right off the bat, the engineering was done by Chris Morris, Richard Dashart and Ken Kayad. Don't know how to say his name. Also produced by Ken, Richard, and Fleetwood Mac themselves. And we've got Charlie Watts and Ken Perry on the mastering. I will say also there were a couple of different masters done in 2004. There was a remaster. So off the bat, just comparing the version from the greatest hits and the remaster, the modern master is louder. I can hear some audible distortion in the mastering, which is probably more of a, a modern loudness byproduct. It's got a much bigger stereo image. The sides are all pushed out completely, but it feels a little bit less vocal forward and a little bit more bass forward. Something really, really cool about this song that I've noticed and picked up on and used in my own work is the philosophy. And this seems like a bit of a common theme for me now. There was an interview that the producers did and they said that when they were arranging this album, Rumours, which is a classic, any instrumental element that felt like, or vocal element, that felt like it was in the same pocket as anything else, frequency-wise or note-wise, they would just can it. So there was no room for anything in the song that was remotely in the same frequency or note pocket as anything else. And I think the result that's come from that is an incredible amount of clarity and focus on this album. If you haven't heard it, I'd really encourage you to. Listening to the track, the vocals are just gorgeous. They're super audible. We've got that clarity that I just talked about, but they're not as forward as maybe some pop songs were in the 70s. The song feels very atmospheric. Again, the stereo image is super wide. You've got all of these sort of ambient guitar licks and incredible instrumentation moving from ear to ear and combined with the vocal reverb that they've used. The song's got this beautiful sense of depth and atmosphere. There's a lot of contrast going on. For example, the drums feel super dry, you know, not a lot of effects going on and, and they feel like they're right there in your face, the drums and bass that are just carrying it. And then everything else in the song, Stevie Nicks is gorgeous, lead vocal and all of these beautiful instrumental, instrumental elements are just moving from ear to ear. It makes for a really gorgeous sound. Very Very true to the style of mixing used in the 70s. It's a very mid-rangey song and a very mid-rangey mix. And I know that sounds like a confusing sentence, but I guess back then their speakers weren't as sub-heavy as they are these days. They also weren't mixing songs as loud, bright, or harsh as they were now. So I guess when you listen to Dreams out of a phone speaker or a laptop speaker or anything with just the mid-range sort of radio-ish frequencies, Everything is super audible. The kick is there, the bass is there, the snare is there, the vocal is there, all of the instrumentation. You see this same approach being used in modern records. A lot of mix engineers use what's called an auratone cube, which is just all of the ugly mid-range frequencies, you know, all the farty frequencies in your voice, the upper frequencies of a bass. Um, They'll mix into this one speaker just to isolate the mid-range. And when they get all of the clarity going there, EQing frequencies out of anything that doesn't need to be clashing with anything else. It makes for a lot of clarity. And in this song, that's definitely the case. It's got a really beautiful dynamic throughout the song, changing from the verse to the chorus. Nothing's too stark in the way of changes, but you just get this super loud cymbal, I think in your right ear to my memory, every time the um, the chorus hits, as well as these lush vocal wide layers. It makes for a beautiful chorus. Yeah, listening to this with the approach to atmosphere, the clarity, the philosophy around nothing belonging in the song that could potentially be clashing with anything else. I think we could all learn a lot here. If you're working on a song and you find that like in the mix, they're clashing, there's two elements that are competing for each other. You got to ask yourself, does this really need to be there? Does that lead guitar that's hitting the same notes as the lead vocal. Can one of them go? Like, what does it sound like if you mute one? Does it sound better? Does your ears sound less confused? If so, uh, I feel like we could all take a page out of the Dreams slash Stevie Nicks slash Mick Fleetwood book here and implement a little bit more focus and minimalism in our arrangements. And I think we're going to have clearer, more concise productions and mixes and better sounding songs overall. So yeah, those are my thoughts and I'll see you guys again next week for another track.